Oh. Been a long few days, last two days, but we're here to give you our opinions on what we thought were the best and the worst from the press conferences that we watched. Uh, we didn't watch the PC gaming one, and we aren't really going to watch whatever the, whatever Nintendo's doing because I'm pretty sure it's just a direct. I'll catch it later. It's a direct. All right. So this is just based on Microsoft, Square Enix, Ubisoft, and Bethesda. Even our best and worst, I would say probably uh, some of these are might overlap, but these are like our best and worst, like top five, I would say, of, of all everything we've seen. Uh, who wants okay. to go first? For our top well, five? I think, the, I think the unanimous idea here is Cyberpunk takes the cake. Yeah. Yeah. Cyberpunk is. I mean, they, they came in with a little groundswell. And they just knocked it out of the park, bringing Keanu Reeves into the game and into the theater. Uh, that to be honest, this has kind of been a lackluster E three in terms of like levels of hype, um, and that I think that's speak just, for yourself. Uh, that's just where it's at right now. I feel like I a lot of these. Oh, is it because PlayStation's not in the? Is it because PlayStation's not there, Jake? No, I. I for me, it's more so. There, there's not a lot. There's not a lot of titles to get excited about, and everything we saw at Ubisoft's press conference we already knew about. Um, they didn't show anything new, really. I mean, they didn't even really show gameplay for anything. Um, yeah. Uh, well, except for Watch Dogs Legion, but that that's just what happens. We get a lot of leaks because of E3, but. Mm-hmm. I thought there were really cool moments, but there was never anything that, like, other than the Keanu Reeves thing with Cyberpunk, there was uh, never anything uh, that was like, oh my okay. god. Well, I don't know. I mean, we, there is a collective shit being lost when the Forza went Lego. Yeah, we True. were. <laughs> yeah, well, like, uh, I really like the Star Wars part of Microsoft. Just because I'm a Star, sure, Wars, and that, Star Wars Well, company. and that had, that had already kind of gotten released during the Stadia event the is leading and then they had the ETH and EA EA and play. celebration celebration yeah but that doesn't make it any less impressive all right so well, like actually seeing gameplay so i'm gonna list off and we already said cyberpunk but i'm gonna list off i have five here my best of just what i saw uh my five would be obviously cyberpunk gears five Watch Dogs Legion, I thought that I think they did a great job presenting how different that's going to be than the other two Watch Dog games. Doom Eternal, because that looks just fucking awesome. And I, you know, I joke that we didn't see any gameplay and that was kind of it kind of sucks, but Avengers was still a, a, a cool thing to see and I'm still excited for that. Mm-hmm. So those are Especially. my best of. Okay. Uh, Sparks, you want to go next? Oh, uh, look at Chancey trying to build up the dramatic tension for his picks. Well, no, I'm still thinking, so I don't want to embarrass myself. Yeah. Well, and again, it goes without saying, Cyberbuck 27-7 takes the cake. Keanu Reeves, fuck yes. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, again, I think it was a show stealer. I think Forza bringing out the Legos. I mean, shit, that was good. He got me. Yeah, I really liked the that they're doing like this weird Lego pack. I liked that. Because it's just kind yep. of kooky, I, and we had joked leading into that Forza was somewhere in there, and it was yeah. inevitably. It is not a Microsoft conference unless you have Gears, Forza, and Halo. Yep, um, <laughs> I would definitely, it, it, even though again, it's it's not a complete three Borderlands between the trailer and the DLC being released. I mean, fuck yeah, I'm in. I'm doing this afterwards, so I'm I'm stoked <laughs> as hell. Um, you know, despite everything, I actually think the the Final Fantasy VII remake it looks incredible. I mean, it's not a game I've played. I, I'm aware of it. I'm I, aware of what happens. Yeah, I would say that's an honorable mention for me. I mean, I'm not into the franchise, and I don't see myself playing it. But I still thought it was a very good presentation. Mm-hmm. Uh, Outer Worlds definitely a strong contender in there too. 
I mean, I'm excited to play that game, but that's also because I had already had other. There had been videos of it and other stuff, and I'd seen other things about it online. I sure, just, but but to look at this game by the developers who made New Vegas and to realize that this is what could have been, it's incredible. And what's even funny is even in that trailer, it still showed a little bit of the jankiness that mm-hmm. they're used to. And I was like, you know what? It kind of works for them. Yep, and then uh, definitely, you know, Star Wars is always a contender. It's the good-looking gameplay. I think they got a real solid actor in Cameron Monaghan. Um, and like I said, a couple of us are trying to pinpoint exactly where in the timeline this takes place. So it, it raises a lot of questions, but it, if nothing else, it brings a quality game to the experience that isn't called Battlefront. I... If I remember correctly, at the EA Play, they specifically said that it it is in between three and four, and it's right after Order sixty six. Uh, yeah, Order sixty six. Yeah, and that's and well and fine. Yeah, and it's still kind of vague. Yeah, but I think that would definitely be a strong round out for me. Okay, my turn. <laughs> yeah. Well, now that we've done uh, the work for you. <laughs> oh yeah, that's, that's what you gotta do to get ahead. Uh, so I'd say probably number one is Cyberpunk with Keanu, of course, and then the rest in no particular order. Like you know me, I love Star Wars. I'm and this game is okay. I'm probably gonna love it. Like I don't know, just the fact that you can climb around and you have your little droid. I just love it. Um, like I can already see myself being rewarded for being a Star Wars fan just by watching the Fallen Order stuff. Because like, like as soon as uh Saw Gerrera, I was like, oh, that's fucking Saw Gerrera. So I also like that he used the lightsaber as a light. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, that was cool. I was just like, well, I can't see. Better pick out this thing that can slice almost anything in half. But I like the gameplay. Um. And then I was, I guess Halo Halo is always, like, I like the story of Halo. I haven't played all of them, but I kind of know the gist of it for the most part. I Halo 5 was, I don't know, not warmly, re- I thought it was okay game. I played a little bit of it at a friend's house, and then I wanted to know the story. That's definitely a Empire Strikes Back of Halo games. Uh, so I'm excited for Halo Infinite. Um, like the thing I like the most from the Bethesda presentation is probably the end. I was surprised you didn't mention. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, yeah, the end. But I was surprised you didn't mention this, Jake. The uh, Wolfenstein. Uh, that looked great. Yeah, yeah. I was mostly. Uh, I think right. the reason I didn't say that is because they just reused the trailer that they'd already released before, and I was like, you, I feel like that, they've shown more. That's true. Especially because the game the, the gameplay is about a month away. Yeah, that's that's true. I guess and then I guess I uh I might be running out of things, but then I really liked what I saw from Watch Dogs. That looked fucking awesome. This the the the, the, the amount of character like I'm really digging this like no set protagonist thing that they're doing for Watch Dogs. Yeah. And then I, and then obviously Avengers. Like if what they said they're gonna do with like constantly like new heroes, new content, I'm all in. So consider me frothy. I mean, it, it seems like not 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 everything can be a triple A winner. Like I, I I feel like most of the Square Enix presentation wasn't for me, and I understand that. So I'm not gonna knock it. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I'll knock Bethesda all day long, though. <laughs> I'll make fun of the American company that I understand, kind of. Anyway, that's those are my thoughts. Should we do worst moments? <laughs> or I guess an honorable mention would be the Forza Lego thing. That was just adorable. Yeah. Well, if we're going worst, obviously we're all going to have the same answer. We all hated Bethesda's conference. <laughs> to me, th- uh... this is an example of why, unlike, you know, like with Square... Like you said, a lot of that stuff isn't for me, and 
Bethesda and Ubisoft were examples for me of why you could do what Sony did and take a year off. And I think if they, I, I don't know, I think the people that run E3 kind of force them to go because if they don't go, then it's just a Microsoft show. And yeah, well, like, oh, go ahead. To, to some degree, it's not so much it feels like they forced them to go, but they forced them to fill out an hour long slot. <laughs> And that's where we had a lot of these problems is, well, what do we have to talk about? Oh, well, let's talk about our fourth mobile game. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's like they should have just announced, I think they should have announced Elder Scrolls 6 this year instead of last year, so at least it would be a year closer to it. Well, and it's also like, you, why can't you do, why didn't Bethesda do what Microsoft did and make a montage of their car, their all their mobile games and and like you know, we were talking about this earlier today. Chance for you is like we could have been ten minutes instead of forty mm-hmm. minutes. And to me, that clearly shows they didn't have anything. All they really wanted to show and focus on was Fallout seventy six and being like, "Hey, everybody, we're sorry. Look, we fixed things. We're doing our best." And uh, all of Doom Eternal. They and, could just yeah. give us a bunch of gameplay from like Doom Eternal, Wolfenstein, and, and Fallout seventy six. It it. Yeah, it feels like such a waste of time. And mm-hmm. I see people online defending it and like, well, not everything's for me. And it's still part of the craft conference, conference, but I'm like, I'm sorry, but you know, everybody talks about how Microsoft had to knock out of the park. Bethesda had to win people back. And to me, they didn't do enough to win me back. And that is someone who always defends Bethesda and, and def- always defends their fallout and everything. And well, and they've like, had it so easy for so many years. They got mm-hmm. away with so much, and now people are kind of fed up with it. I mean, we've been yeah. for years. You sons of bitches need to update your engine. Yeah. And they continue to not do it. And it's like, well, fuck. And this made it. And then, oh, go ahead. And, and then they come out, you know, touting about how they're switching to mobile gaming, and it's, you know, it's, it's, it's lossless and it's latency. But if somebody actually goes back and analyzes it, it's back. 200 milliseconds which is noticeable <laughs> so honestly i don't know whether or not they're just pulling a fucking trick on us all to begin with and whether or not that was actual gameplay of doom on a phone yeah and it to me it's abundantly clear that although avalanche uh made rage 2 it's abundantly clear that id software and machine gun or machine games who make the wolfenstein games they're carrying this company uh because Beth- bethesda game studios even if Elder Scrolls comes out, when it comes out, I should say, in Starfield, which are still probably five years away, it, it's still not enough. And I, you know, I, I joked with you guys that I'd play the the week trial of Fallout seventy six because it does look like they're doing things to make that a better game. But it looks I'm, like a Fallout uh, game. I, yeah, I'm I'm so sick and tired of this bullshit. I am so Whoa. sick and tired of who, Todd Howard in an interview. Flat out says this game is not ready, but we took your money anyway. He doesn't say it like that. I'm paraphrasing, obviously, but that's what the gist of it was. And I'm well, like, uh, no, fuck you. You don't deserve my money if you can't ship a game that's done. Well, and what's more is for so long, they've been able to get away with this idea of coming to E3 and saying, hey, guess what, guys? We're releasing Skyrim on the next console. And they even parodied it last year when they talked about putting it on Alexa. It is on Alexa. Was it is. Years ago, I think. Yeah, it was last year. I think. Regardless. Who cares? Yeah, <laughs> this is a company who's gotten by so long on that title, and yet they're happy to just keep taking people's money and not doing anything. And mm-hmm. that's the most frustrating thing, because I would have had a different opinion of that conference if they would have... Because honestly, I think what they're doing with Fallout 76 is a good thing. I honestly think it's really good. It's it. I'm happy that they're stuck with it and they're fixing it, but it should have been this way when it launched. You should have taken more time and made the game this way to begin with. And then you wouldn't have all this shit and you wouldn't have to give, Uh you could have charged me. You wouldn't have to give all this stuff away for free. They're only giving it away for free because of the shit that they put people through. I guarantee you if it launched like it was supposed to, they would charge for the wastelanders pack. They would charge for all this other stuff. I guarantee. And now it's them and it's them and uh, fucking uh, was it happy games? Fucking embroiled in this fucking No Man's Sky bullshit. Oh, yeah. Uh, Hello Games. 
Hello games, thank you. As you know, because you guys fucked up. You got way ahead of yourselves and you fucked the public over. And now all you can do is sit there and give them free shit and fuck your company over in the long run. And hope that eventually people will buy your game because you're finally turning into what it's supposed to be. Yeah, they're lucky EA fucking screwed the pooch <laughs> so hard on Anthem, or otherwise we'd be talking about them still. Yeah. It, who knows? If they I'm and I'm not I'm I'm being dead serious. I joked about that in the conference. If they made Fallout 76 free to play, I would play it. But until then, I'm not gonna spend money on it. Well, it's like they probably would have uh like kept it the same as launch. Like they were obviously not expecting that big of a reaction a bad reaction from it's like, oh, this is a our Fallout MMO, and I'm just like, you clearly misunderstood what people liked. But it's like we were talking about with Destiny yesterday, that frankly, them going to free-to-play, I think, is a great idea, because you can keep your games as service, this is the way it should be, and then charge people with the expansions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I would gladly play, if it, if it came, even though Wasteland, the Wastelanders pack should have came at launch. I don't know why they thought it would be a great idea to have no NPCs. Oh, I know why. Because the game wasn't done and they didn't have time to put in NPCs. But uh, it should have just launched would, in the spring. Yeah, and if they would have if they would have launched it with the Wastelanders pack intact and had the NPCs, and they would have made it free to play, I would gladly buy the extra like all the stuff they've released they put out since release i would gladly buy those things if the game is good and but I, mean, I, I think this is the legacy and there's no one wants to really compliment it this is the legacy of fortnite <laughs> yeah ruining for better or for worse <clears throat> for better actually i would say it's actually being the better effect on the public because or now we're learning what these companies and the predatory practices are and this is how it should be as a games of service um i am kind of surprised that Activision didn't do anything with Modern Warfare because they're trying real hard to win people back by saying, oh, there's no loot boxes. There's a single player. There's the traditional Call of Duty experience that you like. Well, I'm pretty sure Black Ops 4 was still pretty successful, though. Like, I, I see people that it's, loved Blackout. It sold well for anybody else, but not for... They didn't, <laughs> it, they're, they're, they have extremely dropped off um, since World War II, I think, uh, sold 70 million copies. Which is extremely low for Call of Duty, which is insane. Oh yeah, <laughs> well, they got everyone pissed off with Infinite Warfare, and then it's just like, oh yeah, you gotta buy Infinite Warfare to get the MW, the first Modern Warfare remaster. Yeah, and, then, and I'm like, and just they, fucking sell this to me at twenty dollars, okay? I don't want Infinite Warfare. Yeah, yeah, they gave it to you. They did for forty dollars instead of twenty. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Uh, another one that's on my list. Um, we saw nothing from Skull and Bones, and I understand that the game was delayed. And you know, we talked about it in the uh, towards at the end of the Ubi conference. I said they, I don't think they needed to show it because they've had had to delay it. But at least an update, at least mentioning it. You don't have to show me gameplay or anything. Just or you the- show me. Like a blip of gameplay, maybe. I don't like know. Like instead of a mobile game or something, or instead of like, look at our employees, which, you know, granted, Ubisoft didn't do that much. And I'm glad they didn't just bullshit us around for an hour. Um, yeah. I I don't know. Like, I feel as though that the Skull and Bones thing, they could just been like, okay, it's expect more news on it in a couple months or something like that. I mean, I it's, or I, I guess like my thing is like I know maybe since Assassin's Creed is still, you know, sixteen months away from release, just like hey, sure. we're going to we're going to Rome, okay? Can you guys shut up now? I'm okay, like, yeah, that's all. That's all I wanted. Okay, but on, on the flip side, let's reflect on. Let's remember what two years ago there was a bevy of battle royale games. Oh, still a bevy of battle. That's yeah, another thing but, we can talk about. But it, but at E three. There's a bevy of them being announced. And since in that time, we went down to one. One horribly misannounced Battle Royale mode on Fallout 76. Yeah. Well, that's well, because, and then that's the thing, though, is Call of Duty tried that, but then people were like, why would I pay for that Fortnite 3? Yeah, I, I've heard Firestorm on Battlefield, uh, Battlefield 5 is pretty fun. 
And believe it or not, I've heard Nuclear Winter is good. People were playing it today when it launched with the free trial and all that stuff. People were playing that today and liked it, but it's too little too late. Yeah, but again, why would you pay for it when you've got Fortnite? I guess or Apex. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. you like the Nuclear Winter is free, but you still have to pay for 70 cents, obviously. But um, another thing that uh, this goes back to another thing from the Ubi conference, nothing from Beyond Good and Evil. Why? This game has been in development for what a thousand years, and it looks to me like it's going to be like Kingdom Hearts three, where it takes forever and it finally comes out, and people are like, eh, "Whatever, meh." <laughs> yeah. To be fair, though, if it takes, you know, we're all for games taking their time if it means that we're going to get a good product. You know, like I'd say the only thing that I've noticed that did that really well was Red Dead Redemption two and maybe Arkham Knight a little bit, but what Redemption Red Dead Redemption Redemption 2 did was basically every time it got delayed, we got a new trailer. So it's like, hey, I mean, game's not done Kingdom yet. Hearts, Kingdom Hearts, Final Fantasy 7, they've taken their time. And I'm okay with it. I mean, hell, Borderlands, we're finally getting it. It's been four or five years. Well, yeah, the, the, but they didn't announce it in between. So they, they, yeah. <laughs> they helped themselves that way. The, the well, thing of it they, is they, just, they didn't come right out and say it, right, but we, but we all knew, knew it was coming. I just like the thing of like, don't say shit until you have shit, you know, Bethesda, you know, they did it right with fallout four. So I don't know why they wouldn't repeat that lesson with fallout 76. Okay. We got this at three, three, but we don't, it's not ready. So we're, I don't know. But to your point, does fallout four measure up to its predecessors? Oh, if you ask a lot of people, no, but I thought it was a fine game. So I, I enjoyed it, but I understand why people don't like it. They try it. it it's exactly what they're doing with 76. They tried at least it was it, ready. Make it more appealing to a wider audience. Whereas Fallout 3, it, it went in a different direction. I, it, it went after the Fallout fan base, where 4 and 76 were like, we want everybody. Yeah. Okay. Maybe this is my experience of having not actually played 4. I feel like 4 was a product of using the old engine and cutting corners where you could. Well, a fun story, they created a whole new engine for Fallout 4, believe oh. it or not. And uh, it looked like shit. And it, But it still looked like just an updated version of their last engine. And uh, I, finally, for me, uh, I, I only put this on here because I, I, you know, as much as I look at things, the only thing I really hated from this year's conferences was Bethesda's conference. Um, but uh, Bleeding Edge, the reason I mention that is because it's like, why this is the new game from Ninja Theory. Why are they chasing the hero driven overwatch type thing? Like it, it doesn't, I don't understand it. It's, it. Because honestly, overwatch is so prevalent right now that it's, it's popular. You know, it's, I mean, that, that's an e-sport on its own. Yeah. And it's been around for three years, but it, it's the same thing with, for, with what happened with apex and Fortnite, where it's like, there's a reason why these games are where they are you know it's but, gonna but, be how are you going to pull overwatch players away to play this especially so, if it's so on and PC. Well, so, so the so the problem is overwatch has the backing of blizzard mm-hmm. or it's Fortnite. yeah they have epic games and apex i don't even know who the hell they're with respawn ea right respawn but blizzard on the other hand they're gonna dump a lot of money into making this worthwhile making it the forefront of you know the competitions, whereas Fortnite, fuck, they could do their own competition. Not give a damn. Mm. Um, so when uh, do you guys have any other ones that you were disappointed with? Worst of? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't call it a worst of necessarily, but and maybe this is just the year. It's the off year. Is the sheer number of cinematics versus gameplays? Yep. I it, it, it's a small complaint, sure, but you know there are certain things I want to see what you're doing, not what you could be doing. Yeah, I guess this is not like a worst of. It's like us. It's it's the have and the have nots. And what I don't have, and I really want, is to know what the fuck is Rocksteady doing? Because like I saw a tweet from Sefton Hill like two days ago who's like the lead at Rocksteady. And he's like, no, we won't be. I saw some confusion. We won't be at 
the expo this year, and I'm like, what the hell have you been doing? Your game dropped four years ago. That's the thing is we put and yeah, I understand. And he's been talking about this project, but that's the thing is like, I feel like we put a lot of pressure on people where <laughs> they spend. I know so it's just, we haven't heard anything. I want to hear something. Well, I, th- I think that's the downside of this connected age that we live in is we're expecting constant updates and everything else. Whereas, you know, back in the nineties, you could live in complete ignorance. And one day you just hear that the game's coming. You're like, Oh well, shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I wish um, I I understand that uh, uh, Xbox announced their new console. We knew that was going to happen. We kind of oh yeah, I, that's you know, speculated that twenty twenty was going to be the year you get the next gen. But I wish they would have done just a little bit more to show me the the power of their new console. I want to see what it looks like. Yeah, I think we, I think we got a couple glimpses. Which, if those were the case, if they looked good. Well, I thought it was the One X still like. Unless it no no that was beyond the one X. Um, some more information from uh, Microsoft. I was watching some stuff from inside Xbox. Apparently, there will be after this next like batch of backwards compatible games. They are going to discontinue backwards compatible games for Xbox One because they are currently putting all hands on deck to make all the backwards compatible games that they have now on the Scarlet. So they're putting everything on that honestly i'm a honestly i'm okay with that i feel like at this point we've gotten the best of so is it like like we're gonna stop making backwards compatible so we can put everything we have currently that we can play on the one on the on the scarlet and then maybe we'll go back to making backwards compatible after we're done that's that's that seems to be what was in the messaging was we're gonna put all hands on deck to get a, to make sure you can play those games again on your Scarlet because honestly the PS5 and the Scarlet both I think they know that they have to make Xbox One games backwards compatible like the last gen games backwards compatible on this yeah show. like especially that, that's the that's the biggest folly I'd see between like the last generation to this one it's just like you can well it's like both games will launch in the both generations like but, when Assassin's Creed like Black Flag was on a one and the 360. Yeah. I mean, that's that's consumerism at its base. Is I mean, if you look, even if you look way back to when the uh, the Sega dropped, or when the Nintendo came out. I mean, parents had a hard time justifying buying the new console if they can't play the old games. And what the hell am I collecting all these old games for? This doesn't make sense. And people want to play their old games because we frankly we enjoy them. Yeah, like. I, I'd say that. Oh, go ahead, Chick. No, you're fine. I'd say that if anything, it creates brand loyalty because you can still enjoy, like, I don't know, like, example for you, Sparks, you can still enjoy Borderlands 2 from your 360 in 2012 or today. So, well, for, to a degree, they didn't actually make that backwards compatible because they released a handsome well, collection. Yeah. Well, well, handsome, well, you know what I mean, but like, you know, and dropping are, remasters are, to some degree, I don't have a problem with. Well, yeah, I, I think it's just like the amalgamation of backwards compatible and the remasters, which are just ports that people call remasters. But that's not the point I'm trying to make. It's that I like what they're doing. I think Xbox definitely learned its lesson from the Xbox One because I feel like they were just sitting pretty high and tight, kicking PlayStation's ass uh, with like the 360 versus the PS3. And they just got lazy and complacent, and fucking Sony hit them in the mouth. It, it's well, it's that, and it's the, the matter of first impressions put forth by the CEO when the Xbox One was announced. Oh yeah, it's like, they, yeah, you can't no offline. That's stupid. Everything they said left a bad taste in my mouth. But in addition to that, I don't honestly think that in a real world that might that the Xbox will ever overtake the PS5 because of the Eastern market. Well, I mean, it's, if it's, it does better in America, I'm sure Microsoft considers that a win. Mm. Yeah, sure. Cause that, the, the, if you're Japan, like there's no presence for the Xbox in Japan. Or no, no, no. Worldwide sales. Sony will continue to dominate because um, that's the way it is. Real sure quick. Th- uh, I want to talk about this before we uh, kind of, uh, shove off. 
end it. Um, I, I've seen some things talking about Microsoft's press conference and how some people thought it was they didn't they didn't they dropped the ball in, in a way um, because there's no what? tone. So this is them. They have to come out guns blazing, dominate the, the, the narrative and this, that, and the other thing. So I want to ask you guys and um, feel free to answer first. We have our answers first. But uh, do you think that Microsoft was disappointing? No. Nope. Are you saying that because no. you are brand loyal or do you really believe no, okay. it? <laughs> well, okay. Think, think that you on here. In a, in a conference where there is no private presence from either of the major competition, it's up to Microsoft to show the future, as it were. But this is the stage they've set for the last three years with every acquisition of every studio that they've picked up. You can't go out and spend that kind of money and not have something to 